Welcome to this Functional Skills Level 2 English Training video. This video contains information and guidance on Criterion 17. Analyze texts of different levels of complexity, recognizing their use of vocabulary, and identifying levels of formality and bias. First, we're going to recap at the four purposes of writing and explore the vocabulary that is found in each before moving on to formality and bias. At level 2, and by the end of this session, you should be able to recognize different types of vocabulary in a variety of texts, identify different levels of formality, and recognize bias in texts. Before we look at the use of vocabulary, let's review the four purposes of texts. Writers use vocabulary and language to engage their audience in a variety of ways, depending on the purpose of their texts. Simply put, Writers will choose particular words or phrases to connect with their intended audience. The four main purposes, or reasons, for writing are to persuade, to instruct, to describe, and to explain. Different vocabulary can be used to help the writer speak to their audience in the most effective way. Writers choose vocabulary and language depending on the complexity and formality of their text. Remember, texts can be formal or informal. Let's look at this example. This new technological model is sleek, high-powered, and reliable. It has been tested by numerous professionals. All of them agree it is phenomenal. Can you identify the purpose of this text? Is it instructing, describing, persuading, or explaining? Pause the video, then press play when you're ready to continue. The purpose of this text is to persuade. It is attempting to persuade the reader to purchase the new technology. How do we know this? Pause the video and think about which words or phrases show the writer's intended purpose. Then press play when you're ready to continue. The words in red. New, sleek, high-powered, reliable, and phenomenal are examples of adjectives or describing words. They have been chosen deliberately because they are positive and impress the reader. Furthermore, the text in blue has been used to further show the product is reliable, as people who are knowledgeable about the product also view it favorably. Persuasive texts are texts that try to make the reader do something or think a certain way. They use particular vocabulary and types of words to help get their message across. Emotive words can be used to try and get an emotional response from the reader. These words are often used to try and make the reader share the writer's point of view. Examples include devastating, exciting, loving, glorious, frustrating and needless. Can you spot any of the emotive words used in this persuasive advert? Pause the video, then press play when you're ready to continue. As you can see, this advert uses many different emotive words, such as loving, courage, tragically, and homeless, to persuade the reader to adopt Betty. The use of first or second person perspective helps to involve the reader and make them feel included. First person perspective uses words such as I and we. Second person perspective refers to the audience directly, using words like you and your. Can you spot examples of first and second person perspective in this persuasive advert? Pause the video, then press play when you're ready to continue. An example of first person perspective includes the use of we in the first paragraph. The statement, we must find Betty a new home as soon as possible, involves the reader and makes them feel like they could make a difference to Betty's life. An example of second person is used in the final paragraph. You can make her life complete again. Here, the writer directly addresses the reader using the word you to try and persuade them to adopt Betty. Finally, persuasive texts will often use positive or negative language depending on the author's viewpoint and how they want the reader to feel. For example, if a writer has a positive opinion of the topic, they will use positive language like excellent and phenomenal. However, if the writer has a negative view of the topic, 
Their language will mirror this by using negative words, such as disgusting, dreadful or horrendous. Can you spot some of the positive or negative vocabulary used in this persuasive advert? Pause the video, then press play when you're ready to continue. As you can see, this advert uses positive language, such as loving and courage. These words help the reader connect with the advert and also make them feel like they can help the animals. Negative words like tragically and desperately are used to make the reader feel sorry for the dogs and want to adopt them. Let's move on to instructional texts. Instructional texts use very different language and vocabulary to persuasive texts. The purpose of instructional texts is to instruct the reader or tell them how to do something. Because of this, instructions need to be clear and direct. They use imperative verbs and adverbs to achieve this. Let's look at these in more detail. Imperative verbs are action words that tell the reader to do something. They are command or instruction words. For example, beat the eggs, add some water, and knead the dough. The imperative verbs in these sentences are beat, add, and knead. They are telling the reader what action they need to do. Can you identify the imperative verbs in the instructions below? Pause the video, then press play when you are ready to continue. Let's check your answers. In gather the equipment, the imperative verb is gather. In identify any unknown plants, identify is the imperative verb. In remove any large annual weeds, the imperative verb is remove. And in dispose of any garden waste appropriately, the imperative verb is dispose. Have you noticed a pattern? Imperative verbs are generally found towards the beginning of sentences within instructions, though this is not always the case. Adverbs can also be used to demonstrate how to carry out the imperative verb and instruction. The easy way to remember an adverb's function is to remember that it adds more information to a verb. For example, quickly beat the eggs tells the reader that they must move fast when performing this action. Other examples include the word carefully and carefully add 150 milliliters of water, and the word thoroughly in knead the dough thoroughly. Can you identify the adverbs in the following instructions? Pause the video, then press play when you are ready to continue. The adverb cautiously tells the reader to be careful when they are pouring the hot water. The milk should be added slowly to ensure the reader adds the correct amount. The adverb gently suggests the cup is fragile, so tells the reader to be cautious when moving it. Descriptive texts can be fictional or non-fictional. Their purpose is usually to describe a process, an event, a person, or a place. The writer will use vocabulary to paint a picture in the reader's mind. They will often use adjectives and adverbs to do this. For example, let's look at the sentence below. It uses a variety of adjectives and adverbs to help the reader imagine the market. Sensory language can also be used to help the reader imagine what is being described. Sensory language uses the five senses. These are things we can see. Hear, smell, touch, and taste. Let's take a look at an example. Birds tweeted loudly as they soared over the fast-flowing, roaring river. In this example, sensory language is used to help the reader imagine what could be seen and heard. In their imagination, the reader can hear birds tweeting loudly and the roaring sound of the water. They can picture birds soaring and the river's water moving quickly. Look at the example below. Can you identify any sensory language? Pause the video, then press play when you're ready to continue. A gentle rustling is used to describe the sound of the leaves. Stillness of the pond's water is a visual description, and warmth of the sunshine on your skin encourages the reader to imagine how the sun's rays would feel on their skin. 
This sensory language is being used by the writer to help the reader imagine that the reserve is a calming and beautiful place. Descriptive texts can sometimes use figurative language to engage the reader. Figurative language uses non-literal language to create further meaning. This includes the use of similes and metaphors. Similes use as or like to compare one thing to another. This creates imagery for the reader. For example, he is as sly as a fox. Here, the man is not actually a fox, but is behaving deceitfully, so has been compared to one using the simile as sly as a fox. Metaphors describe something as being something else. For example, he has a heart of stone. The man does not actually have a heart of stone, but is seen as being cold or unfeeling. The final purpose we are going to explore is explanation. Explanatory texts tell you why or how something happens. They are usually non-fiction and, importantly, do not contain opinions. Examples of explanatory texts include a journal article about the effects of global warming, an information leaflet on how to access NHS services, and a report on the findings of an audit. Explanatory texts are typically formal and written in a way that ensures their purpose is clearly conveyed. Explanatory texts also use subject-specific and technical vocabulary. These are words and phrases associated with the topic being discussed and are used to explain a specific concept or idea. The example below is explaining how demolition workers are checking the area a building is situated in. Subject-specific language includes property, situated and demolition workers. The word surveying and the phrase ensure the building can be destroyed safely. Explain how the workers are undergoing the demolition process. Finally, facts and statistics are used to give the reader true and reliable information about a subject. Statistics provide the reader with information such as numbers, dates and percentages to help them understand a topic further. In the example below, the statistic 159 years has been used. Let's take a look at the example below. Can you identify any subject-specific or technical language, as well as any facts or statistics that have been used? Pause the video, then press play when you're ready to continue. Perhaps the easiest vocabulary choice to identify is the use of facts or statistics. The example explains that the restaurant has been closed for two months. Subject-specific and technical language includes recommended, restaurant, food hygiene rating, and food safety practices. Formality refers to the way writers use language. A text can be either formal or informal. This depends on who their intended audience is, as well as the text's context. The writer's choice of vocabulary can also determine whether a text is formal or informal. You must be careful and consistent when using formal and informal language. Can you remember the difference between informal and formal writing? Pause the video while you think about this, then press play when you're ready to continue. Informal writing is chatty or conversational, which creates a personal tone. Informal writing is often full of emotions and opinions to show the writer's point of view. Slang and colloquialisms, such as words like kids, mum and telly, can be used as they convey familiarity and a personal tone. Similarly, informal writing also uses informal greetings, such as hi, thanks or cheers. It uses humor or words and phrases intended to make the reader laugh. Likewise, informal writing uses contractions, such as wouldn't or didn't. Idioms can be used to express an idea. For example, saying over the moon instead of extremely delighted. Abbreviations are often used because informal writing is personal. Finally, formal writing may also use exclamations to show the writer's emotions. These include excitement, anger, or even shock. Formal writing uses standard English, which means ensuring the correct grammar, punctuation, and spelling is used. This can be spoken or written. A serious, polite or professional tone is also used. This means that humor and colloquialisms, or slang, 
should be avoided. Formal writing does not use humor and will also use formal greetings and closes, such as dear or yours sincerely, to show professionalism and a serious tone. Contractions are not used. Instead, the full words are written out. The writer also does not use idioms, abbreviations, or exclamations as their writing needs to be professional and clear. Analyze the vocabulary used in the examples below and state whether each example is formal or informal. Example A. Dear Sarah, further to our meeting, I would like to confirm the arrangements for the forthcoming team training session. Example B. You guys are going to love the new improvements to the school canteen. Who doesn't love a cheeky hot dog? Pause the video, then press play when you're ready to continue. Example B is informal. The writer addresses the reader personally using second-person perspective, you, and expresses their opinion when they say you guys are going to love the new improvements. The contraction doesn't is used, instead of does not. The phrase cheeky hot dog shows use of slang and humor. Example A is formal. It uses standard English and has a professional and serious tone. It uses subject-specific or technical vocabulary, such as confirm the arrangements and forthcoming team training sessions. This example doesn't use contractions. Instead, words such as I would are written out properly. When sitting your reading exam, please be aware that an answer like it uses a serious tone will not be accepted, as informal texts can also be serious. However, stating that the text does not use idioms, humor, or exclamation marks is an acceptable answer. Example B is informal. The writer addresses the reader personally using second-person perspective, you, and expresses their opinion when they say you guys are going to love the new improvements. The contraction doesn't is used, instead of does not. The phrase cheeky hot dog shows use of slang and humor. Now it's time to put your learning into practice. Read the text carefully before answering the question. Analyze the vocabulary used in text A and state whether the text is formal or informal. You can see that the question is worth two marks and that you have been provided with a template for your answer. You will receive one mark for identifying whether the text is formal or informal and one mark for providing a reason for this. There are lots of potential answers. Pause the video while you read the text and answer the question, then press play to continue. Let's take a look at the answers. Firstly, the text is informal. There are many explanations for this, which we will now explore. We know that text A is informal as it uses idioms and slang, such as hanging up your boots and doom and gloom. Contractions, such as don't and haven't, have also been used. The text includes opinions, which make it more personal. For example, we believe it's important. Humorous language like it won't undo all the good you have just done we promise, is used, as well as exclamation marks. Remember you only needed to include one explanation to get the second mark. Bias occurs when a writer attempts to influence a reader by showing their support or opposition for something or someone. In other words, they give their point of view or opinion to attempt to influence the reader. Biased text may contain Persuasive language, such as positive or negative words, and emotive language. Opinions of the writer or quotes from others that support their opinion. Humor to entertain the reader. Forceful language to make the reader agree with the writer's viewpoint. And statistics that validate or prove their viewpoint. Alternatively, a biased text may make claims without supporting the statement with evidence. A biased text is not balanced. It may give alternative views or arguments, but overall, the text will verify and reflect the writer's opinion. Let's take a look at the example here. My meal at the restaurant was incredible. The steak was tender and succulent. I highly recommend you book a table as soon as possible. Here we can see that the writer has used persuasive language. 
They have used positive adjectives, such as incredible, tender, and succulent. They have also given their opinion when they say their meal was incredible and recommended that the reader book a table. A less biased text will cover a range of viewpoints. Examine the positives and negatives. Not try to persuade the reader. And contain more facts than opinions from the writer. Let's take a look at the example below. The meal arrived in a timely manner and tasted exactly as it was described on the menu. However, the dessert menu was small and did not include a variety of choices. Here, we can see that the writer has provided factual information. This way, they are allowing the reader to form their own opinion of the restaurant. They have listed the positive aspects of the restaurant, as well as the negatives, and have avoided giving their opinion while doing so. They have not tried to persuade the reader. Let's practice identifying bias in texts. Look at the texts that have been provided on this slide and the next. Explain why text C is the least biased. Justify your answer using both texts. When looking at this question, we can see that it is worth two marks. This suggests that there will be two parts to our answer. We have already been provided with the least biased text, which is text C. Text C can be found on the next slide. We need to read both texts carefully to find out why text C is less biased than text B. The question also asks us to refer to both texts in our answer. This means we are going to have to compare both texts to get full marks. The next two slides contain the texts we have been asked to analyze. Pause the video now to read text B. When you are ready, press play to read text C. Pause the video while you read text C and have a go at answering the question. Explain why text C is the least biased. Justify your answer using both texts. Remember the question is worth two marks. If you need to go back and reread text B, simply rewind the video. Press play when you're ready to review your answer. Let's take a look at the answer. Text C is the least biased text. This means it is less one-sided than text B. Text B is therefore more biased than text C. This is because it is trying to persuade the reader to go to college. It doesn't mention other options like apprenticeships. And it only lists the benefits of going to college. Text C is less biased because it gives different opinions. It has a range of different viewpoints. It lists both the positives and negatives of studying in college. Text C also suggests that Helen can get advice and check both options out. Remember, other answers may be accepted if they are based on one of the texts and make a valid point. If you are asked to compare texts for their level of bias in your reading exam, you will need to compare all three texts to gain full marks. Let's recap what you've learned in this video. You should now be able to recognize different types of vocabulary in a variety of texts, identify different levels of formality, and recognize bias in texts. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.